Enable. Investment is not a zero-sum game, especially when multiple asset classes are involved. It's an organism that evolves and you need to understand how that evolution works if you want to master it. And that's where we come in. Hello and welcome to NSC Finvis Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 18. I'm your host, Gautam Srinivasan, and today we are at Amul Fed Dairy in Ahmedabad to talk about mutual funds versus other asset classes. It started with an idea to eliminate exploitation by middlemen and soon became a movement that catalyzed India's white revolution. Over the years, Amul has indeed lived up to its vision of becoming the taste of India. Amul has transformed the lives of generations of farmers along its almost six-decade journey and today it works with 3.6 million milk producers producing almost 15 million litres of milk every day. From today's event, I expect that uh, the people who are expert in uh, financial uh, this thing, they will be coming, they will be sharing uh, what are the different plans and options which are available uh, especially because you are doing in the factory, so we have all salarized people. So they are how, what, what should be uh, plan saving they should do, how much they should do, where they should do, and different options which will be shared with them. I want to know how much we should save. It should not like uh, we save for future and we don't enjoy in the present time. So there should be optimum mix for expenses and saving. So that I want to know. On the behalf of all the employees, I think they should share the what are the. Uh, options available for the investment, for the wealth creation options and the, what are the risks on the basis of this employee and what are government policies also they are going to for future in, uh, development. Today the event is going to happen, we expect that we will get some new wealth management so that we can invest in the limited source income of source in the future in the limited source income of source and we can get some more knowledge in the future and we can get some more knowledge. Welcome to NSC Finvis Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 18. Today's topic of discussion is mutual funds versus other asset classes. It's a very important topic considering the complexities in each asset class. And to deconstruct this topic, we have with us two experts, two top financial minds in India, Mehra Birani and Kalpesh Ashur. And of course, the working professionals here at Amul are eager to ask all the questions that they have on this topic and of course, list out their goals and see how our financial planning experts can solve all those goals for them. So we'll kick things off uh, with a brief primer on the topic, which is mutual funds versus other asset classes. So uh, what's a good starting point, Mehrab, on this? When people want to get into uh, in the mutual fund space to start investing, what's a good starting point for them? Ultra short term funds? Mutual fund is not an asset class. It's a vehicle for investment. So through mutual funds, you invest in different asset classes, whether it is equities, whether it is fixed income, whether it is gold, commodities. So different, even in equities, you get different class, class of funds, like uh, you get the large cap funds, mid cap funds, even in debt, you get the, you know, the liquid funds, the short term funds, the guilt income funds, etc. And the more early you start, the better it is. I just give a very simple example. Say if you invest 15,000 rupees per month for 25 years at 12% per annum, which is very much achievable if you have a proper balanced asset allocation, then at the end of 25 years, you will accumulate a portfolio of around 3 crore rupees. But if you delay that by just say 5 years and if you invest for 20 years, that's to get that same 3 crore rupees at 12% per annum, you will require to invest double the amount, that is 30,000 rupees. So the more you delay, the more you will be away from your financial goals. So from the time you start your employment or job, the first salary, the first income you get, 
from that time you make an allocation start investment start early make a proper portfolio and i'm sure over a medium term you'll reach your goals looking at the rate of returns which uh, mehrab was talking about kalpesh mutual funds are consistently in favor versus uh, versus other uh, uh, you know options like a real estate or a gold and it makes complete sense mutual funds have various various benefits one is through the normal sip mode you can actually invest a very small portion regularly for the period which you want god forbid if you want to withdraw that amount even liquidity is easy so if you are not an expert in buying stocks why not give that duty to a person who is a professional so if you don't want to have your investments in bank fds and uh, bonds and all those things debt funds is a brilliant medium and it's tax efficient also if you keep your money in debt funds above 3 years you get 20% with indexation which practically gives you a better return than a bank fd then you have gold based mutual funds one more asset class you are attacking so your investment in gold also can be done you don't need to store physical gold we are now looking at the concept of reits which is a real estate investments that is surely coming up it's still not caught up our sip book which is almost 6000 crore per month has actually overtaken the foreign investors uh, inflow which was there at one point of time right but again con- considering the news which came out regarding ltcg and other <laughs> aspects i'm sure a lot of the investors who who joined into this mutual fund bandwagon have a lot of questions regarding what what's going to happen to their investment so could you bust some of the myths around ltcg for the benefit of the audience which is already invested in funds first let's talk about the ltcg ltcg was always there what has happened this time is after almost 13 14 years the ltcg tax has been reintroduced and that has been introduced at 10% of your capital gains so you've made a capital gains of say 3 lakh rupees all that is protected up to 31st jan what happens from 1st february onwards is where the story starts so after 2 years that 3 lakh rupees for some reason has become 5 lakh rupees now after 2 years you decide to sell it in the new ltcg tax regime so what is the government going to do first lakh of rupees which is there is exempt on the remaining lakh of rupees you're going to be charged 10% only so that's 10000 rupees only now the myth here is now if you do the annualized return which is the the cream of the entire investments that what is the annualized return i got the cagr compounded annualized growth rate on that 20% you pay 10% you still get 18% that's that's i think the key highlight that's the here. key issue here that you are selling below the amount which you had already got protected so you might as well hold on to it all right what points should they lo- should they look at in terms of diversifying their portfolio in a way that they can withstand volatility in a relatively uh, you know safer way than what they would otherwise do if they committed some of the mistakes just give us a brief on that when you invest say in an equity fund you don't look at the you know daily weekly monthly or even quarterly return you look first at the fund house who is the promoter who is behind the fund whether that fund house has a good reputation since how many years the fund house is in existence then you look at the background of the fund manager how many years the fund manager has been there whether he is there for 10 years 15 years how many cycles you know market moves in 5 to 7 year cycles so at least at least minimum one cycle has is failed and don't look at his performance only during bull markets during bull market anybody can do anybody can buy anything and it will go up look at the performance of the fund and the fund manager during bear markets also because that is a real test also what scheme he has said you know so you look at more qualitative aspects and lastly you come to the quantitative or the performance base so therefore if you do proper asset allocation you are insulated towards individual volatility in different asset classes uh, we have to know the distinction between risk and volatility we'll take a short break on that note but lots more to discuss on the topic of mutual funds versus other asset class So stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Welcome back. You're watching NSE Finvest Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 18. The topic of discussion: mutual funds versus other asset classes. Now, uh, let's talk about portfolio diversification here, Mehrab. Uh, what are the mistakes to avoid when when somebody who wants to diversify the money, the money they want to invest over other asset classes? What should they be watching out for? The primary mistake what people do is that they they invest in correlated assets. So when you do diversification, you invest in non-correlated assets. When you do that. 
what happens that for a given amount of risk your return actually increases all right and kalpesh what about portfolio churning now there is some fear that you know when uh, the implementation of that recategorization of schemes happen then there could be significant portfolio churning so how to avoid unnecessary portfolio churning so what sebi is trying to do is that now they are going by the market cap and they are going to indicate what is large cap what is mid cap and what is the multi cap and small cap categorization and then the fund houses have to come in line and recategorize their existing schemes according to the new regulation which will come out so it's ultimately going to benefit the end user it's going to make life easy but it is going to come at a little bit of a i think a mental churning but i personally believe that this was much required because there was too much of complexities involved in all the schemes and now it's done for the better for simplification all right another question a lot of the investors have is the growth versus the dividend debate you know how to which which option to choose could you give us a sort of a primer on what to do on that you have to understand one thing that what dividend a mutual fund pays is not anything anything extra it is paying out of your own money when you buy a stock for example a direct equity share there the company which pays dividend it pays out of the profits which the company earns so the company will earn profit and some amount of profit maybe 20 30 40% whatever is the payout ratio it will distribute as dividend but when you are buying a mutual fund the mutual fund say has 100 rupees and if it is paying 5 rupees dividend then it is paying 5 out of that 100 rupees only immediately your nav comes down from 100 to 95 so you are not getting anything extra so you must opt for dividend schemes when you require that kind of an income if you require a regular income then you opt for dividend if you don't require regular income if you are planning for your medium to long term goals and you want to build a good amount of corpus then you opt for a growth option in which your money is automatically directly invested in that own, that same scheme all right at this point let's get some of the professionals here to list out the goals that they have mentioned in the cue cards and see what response they can elicit from our experts here the first name i'd like to call is ms binjan patel i'd like to save about 8 crore of rupees until i retire and i want to build a hospital and a school and i can save as of now 15000 rupees a month which i'm saving all yes. right so a target of 8 crores and uh, uh, 15000 currently as a saving capacity per month and the time horizon is 30 years starting early is the mantra generally what we say is that 20% of your income hmm. should be dedicated towards investments so as your income grows your investments also will grow so right now the amount which you've set aside obviously will grow Okay. but discipline and focus is the most important thing and in this period you will face a lot of turbulence but that is where your own will and determination comes into the picture thank you so much for asking your question can i call on shailesh b modi to get up and uh, list out the goal that they have mentioned uh, my goal is uh, to educate my uh, to send my children uh, uh, foreign for education and for that uh, i have calculated that uh, i need around uh, 30 to 35 lakhs of rupees okay so around 20000 rupees uh, mera is what uh, shailesh can save uh, in a period of 10 years he wants a corpus of 30 lakhs for his children's education yeah. so shailesh your uh, children's education would be a long term goal for you so i think you should have planned little earlier for that but still 10 you have 10 year on your side and i think uh, if you even today if you invest uh, say if you invest uh, around 15000 or 1000 per month at 12% i think you should be able to reach your goal uh, but you have to remember one more thing that you know uh, when you are reaching close to your goal say you said 10 year 10 to 11 years so when you are around one year away from your goal slowly slowly you shift from equity funds towards balance and liquid funds because when you are near to your goal you don't want volatility to affect you all right i hope we've answered your question uh, the next person i'll be calling out is palak kesha my question is whether in this uh, fluctuating fluctuating market whether invest in the real estate or the mutual fund or the equity if you have the money which you are doing as an sip the power of compounding in equities is tremendous if you put in your money for 10 15 years in equity regardless of whether a fluctuating market bull market bear market if the market has seen good 2 3 cycles the track record at least says that you are getting a 12 to 15% type of a return annualized return set your goals then look at what the present situation you are in on that note we'll take another short break uh, but when we return the floor is open to the working professionals here at amul to ask any questions that they have to our financial experts here so stay tuned to cnbc tv 18 lots more coming up
Welcome back to the final segment of NSC Finvis Season 5, powered by CNBC TV18. Well, the working professionals here at Amul are very eager to ask all the questions that they have to our uh, panel of experts. We'll start with you first, sir. I would like to ask one question. Whether ULIP is a better option over mutual fund or not? The word ULIP itself consists of unit linked insurance plan. The same unit is also there in a mutual fund. ULIPs also have an option, like in mutual funds, of having an equity portfolio, a balanced portfolio, a moderate portfolio, so on and so forth. The only element which is different here is the insurance part. Charges which are levied, which are inbuilt, are quite high. Off late, they have recognized and they have come out revamped and come up with low-cost ULIPs. But yet, there are certain opaque things which a ULIP always persists with. Second, the lock-in period for a ULIP still remains at five years. In case you decide to opt out of a ULIP before five years, I think nobody makes anything out of it. The lock-in period of a mutual fund is one year. So term plan in what you need for insurance and for anything which you require for your uh, investment potential has to be looked in a separate manner. You can't mix the two things. And just because the tax element has been left out for ULIPs, I don't think still it makes a stronger point that you should look at ULIPs and not mutual funds. The next person I'd like to call is K.R. Ambalia. Uh, my question was uh, whether uh, investing in a mutual fund directly or uh, uh, NPAs, that is National Pension Scheme, uh, which is also uh, tax saver, uh, which is a better option? If you see invest in mutual funds, the tax saving mutual funds, uh, you get a, up to a one and a half leg deduction under section 80C, which is clubbed with your other things like your public provident fund, your EPF uh, and other bank fixed deposits, etc. Also, you have an option. So that is one thing. Also, you have an NPS, which is an additional 50,000 rupees per annum deduction under section 80CCD. So this is an additional benefit which the government has given. Uh, when you invest in NPS, you have an option. You have a choice of selecting the fund, the fund manager, the fund house. You have there are different schemes also there are equity schemes different composition of equity in the funds so you have various options and it is for long term investment so I think uh, NPS is a very good option first of all it gives you an extra 50,000 rupees uh, tax deduction at a time of investment plus also it gives you the choice of your asset class the fund manager the fund house the asset class which you want to invest in and also it will help you meet your long term goals I hope we've answered your question. All right, let's have the gentleman there. A mic passed on to the gentleman there. I have sir, two questions. First one is that I want to invest in mutual funds. Should I invest through SIP or lump sum deposit? The second question is, sir, that the income earned through equity, is it considered as income through other sources in during calculation of when income tax? When you want tax? to file your yeah. income tax. All right, so two, two questions here, Mera. Assuming you get a monthly salary, then I think SIP would be best option for you to meet your medium and long-term goals. Uh, plus, you'll also get the benefit of rupee cost averaging. So, I think uh, uh, you should go for SIP. Lump sum, if you have a lump sum, then it depends on what goals you have and for what it is. And accordingly, you have to do your allocation. Uh, the second question regarding taxation. So, uh, all mutual funds, they are treated as capital gains. Uh, there are different kinds of funds. There is equity fund, balance fund, uh, debt funds. They have different tax structure. If it is short term, then it will be added to your normal income. Uh, if it is a long term, then now as Kalpesh explained the full long term capital gain structure. So if it is more than one year, you will have to pay 10% uh, tax on that. If it's a, if you are in the dividend scheme, then the 10% DDT will be deducted. So uh, it's a capital gain, whether long term, short term, you have to see that and accordingly your tax structure will come. Final uh, audience member I'll call for this segment is Nayak Dhawal, if you could get up. My question is, sir, whether... Uh um, uh, it is uh, better to invest in gold uh, more than uh, mutual funds. So gold is just an alternative currency. It can provide you some kind of hedge against inflation. Also in India, we are habituated. We require gold for our consumption, for our children's daughters, marriage, etc. So up to that extent, you should buy gold and you should keep that uh, more so than buying physical gold. I would advise you to buy, you know, in a gold ETF or a gold uh, fund. I think that is a much better and a smarter way to save in gold. And uh, it's a much easier easier way also, a tax efficient way also and but don't do gold as an investment, not more than 10% of your asset allocation I think should be in gold. 
All right, on that note, uh, we'll wrap up this discussion. The topic has been mutual funds versus other asset classes. We've understood the various uh, aspects of that discussion, seen how asset classes perform versus volatility. And I'd like to thank the experts who, who gave their insights on the topic, Mera Birani and Kalpesh Asher. And I'd like to thank the working professionals here at Amul Fed Dairy for all the questions that they had to ask and all the inputs that they gave us during this discussion. And of course, the viewers at home for tuning in to this episode. Stay tuned. Lots more insights on financial planning coming up. Keep watching CNBC TV 18. This session of Finviz was very helpful to open the avenue wherein I know what are diversity, diversified funds, how can I invest my money in a better way and now I have quite good platform where I can invest my money. The interactive session in Finviz has been able uh, to help uh, our professionals like us to understand various facets of investment management. Most importantly, it has been able to link uh, uh, the various uh, fund management options with our long, short term and long term goals in our life and for our family also.